Hello Wonderful Person, this is Anton, and today we're going to do a bit of an update about that third interstellar comet that's visiting the solar system and was discovered on July 1st of 2025. The comet now referred to as 3i Atlas. 3i in this case refers to the fact that this is the third interstellar comet. And it just so happens that just a few hours ago, we finally got new images. Which means that we definitely have to talk about this extraordinary event once again, because these bizarre cosmic visitors, at least as of today, are definitely super unique. And while it's now officially confirmed that not only is this an object from outside of the solar system, it also is potentially the oldest comet ever observed. Which, if correct, provides us with unprecedented window into the formation of star systems far, far away, and might even help us explain the history of the galaxy itself. And so let's briefly discuss some of the new updates, talk about this comet once again, but let's also start with the brief introduction to how this was discovered. And here, as always, this was completely by accident. On July 1st of 2025, images captured by the NASA-funded Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, also known as ATLAS, that routinely scans the night skies for various moving objects, discovered something somewhat bizarre. An object moving at 130,000 miles per hour, or approximately 210,000 kilometers per hour, or close to about 60 kilometers per second. And it was really this extreme velocity, combined with its unusual trajectory, that indicated that this is a unique object. Because first of all, unlike other comets, here the trajectory was not parabolic, it was hyperbolic, or the eccentricity in this case was more than one. And this is exactly what's expected from interstellar comets. For example, for the first comet, Oumuamua, the eccentricity was 1.2, for the second comet, Borisov, it was 3.6, but this one had it at 6.2. This was a highly hyperbolic orbit, and there was absolutely no way this was coming from the solar system at all. And it actually only took a few days to confirm all of this, just because of the extreme velocity and because of the extreme orbit. As a matter of fact, it only took 24 hours to confirm its interstellar nature. And it actually only took a few days for a team of 40 astronomers from the Michigan State University to quickly release the first scientific paper describing this object and explaining what we know about it so far. And that of course shows you how exciting this event already was. And so here the scientific urgency was kind of warranted. Mostly because we only had one shot at observing this object, and because within the next year, it's most likely going to be extremely difficult to see. But I guess now let's talk about one of the recent discoveries in regards to its potentially unusual origins or where it possibly came from. This is based on some of the recent studies you can find in the description, but here we now have at least one study analyzing its trajectory and trying to figure out its origins and possibly its age. And the initial results are somewhat surprising. Now, first, let's briefly discuss the trajectory of two previous comets, just so that all this makes sense. Oumuamua and Comet Borisov both entered the solar system largely head-on, relative to the trajectory of the Sun across the Milky Way, which implied that their origin seems to be from the galaxy's main thin disk, where the majority of stars reside. And here it's actually important to understand that our galaxy seems to contain two separate disks with two separate origin stories. And it sort of looks like this. As you can see, the Sun is also inside the thin disk. But there's also a thick disk, which is quite often found in a lot of disk galaxies and seems to be present in at least 60% of all of them, suggesting that most of them form in a very similar way. And pretty much all of the stars inside the thick disk are very different in terms of chemistry and motion compared to what we have inside the thin disk. For example, most of the stars in this case seem to be much lower in metals, suggesting they're much, much older. And while it just so happens that this particular comet seems to be coming toward the solar system side on, indicating a very different origin, with the recent simulations presented at the Royal Astronomical Society National Astronomy Meeting in Durham, England, implying that this comet most likely originated from this thick disk containing much older stars, which in short represents a lot of ancient stars above and below the thin disk, and that seems to contain at least 10 to maybe 15% of all Milky Way stars, 
which existed here for billions of years. As a matter of fact, most of the stars in this part of the galaxy are believed to be billions of years older than the solar system, mostly due to their low metallicity. And this implies that this comet could be the first interstellar object to have come from an extremely ancient star. In this case, this conclusion was reached by using a novel computer program known as Ototaki Oxford Model. You can learn about this in the study in the description. And intriguingly, the main author of this paper actually just finished defending his thesis, specifically on this topic, right before the comet was discovered. And so for Matthew Hopkins, a doctoral candidate at the University of Oxford, this was a perfect real-life opportunity to prove his point. And to prove this, researchers used data from the ESAS Gaia Space Telescope and combined this with models of protoplanetary disk chemistry and galactic dynamics with the results suggesting that both velocity and the trajectory of this comet seem to fall within the expected range for such an origin. And because this comet most likely formed from various leftovers around these ancient thick disk stars, here the scientists suggest that 3i Atlas could be at least 3 billion years older than the solar system, but possibly even older than that. So essentially at least 7.5 to maybe 9 billion years old. But what's even more bizarre is that for pretty much most of this time, this comet possibly drifted through interstellar space without interacting with anything. Although obviously exactly how the comet is, is currently unknown. And so this definitely makes this the oldest comet we've ever seen anywhere. And assuming that this is correct, and assuming that this indeed came from these ancient stars in the thick disk, here the implication is that this is going to be a comet much lower in metals and much higher in ices, resulting in a much higher water content and thus resulting in an enormous tail. And so here we're going to have our first test really soon. As this comet approaches the sun, the expectation is that we're going to see huge amounts of water spewing from the comet, making all of this very easily visible. And because the closest approach to the sun is going to happen around October 2025, sometimes between September and November, we're probably going to be able to tell for sure if this is indeed one of these ancient thick disk comets. But right now, this is essentially the best image we have. This is from the Gemini Norris multi-object spectrograph that shows us an extremely compact coma, or the cloud of gas and dust surrounding the icy nucleus, with this image also kind of confirming that this comet is indeed pretty large. Compared to Oumuamua that was about 200 meters across, and compared to Borisov that was just under 1 kilometer, this here seems to be at least 20 kilometers. So this is a relatively large object. And because it's so large, it's also going to make it much easier to study, making the next few months super exciting for a lot of astronomers. But at the moment, some of the first observations don't actually show us too much. Right now, the comet itself seems to be just a little bit bluer, with a slightly redder comma, compared to at least what we expect from the solar system, but by itself this is not too unusual. And so some of the recent observations have not really discovered anything strange yet. But that's also because the comet is still pretty far away. Right now it's somewhere near the Jupiter's orbit, at a distance of over 460 million kilometers or 290 million miles. But it's also approaching the sun super quickly, at nearly 60 kilometers per second. And it's also going to be at its closest approach to planet Earth, sometimes around December 19th. Although luckily for us, it's still going to be pretty far away, nearly twice the distance of Earth to the sun. Which means that it poses absolutely no threat. And at the moment, astronomers think that it's most likely not going to be visible to the naked eye, but will probably be visible to most telescopes and most stargazing binoculars, especially sometimes in the late 2025, early 2026. But at the same time, between September and December of 2025, we're unlikely to get any more updates. And for one reason, it's actually going to be behind the sun. You can actually see all of this in the simulation right here created by researchers from the Arizona University. But at the moment, everyone is waiting for the pictures from two specific telescopes, the Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb. And that's because they're able to study these objects in multiple wavelengths and can definitively reveal the chemical composition, the size, and even the structure of these objects. Although here, because the comet is moving pretty fast, it's not entirely certain if they're going to be able to capture it directly. But it's also possible that some of the NASA's rovers and some of the NASA's orbiters might be also able to see this comet as well, because it's going to be passing really close to Mars at the end of the year. 
And so hopefully by early 2026, we're going to have a lot of observations and quite a lot of studies talking about what astronomers discovered on this object and possibly discussing its origins in more details. Because in this case, this is literally a direct sample from a part of the galaxy we've never seen up close anywhere before. And so this can help us study the chemistry and the dynamics across the galaxy, but also provide some answers about how ancient interstellar comets might have played a role in seeding stars and planets early on. Because today we believe that at least 10,000 such objects are currently somewhere in the solar system. And that means that they possibly do interact with planets at least to some extent, and maybe even collide with certain planets, delivering something to their surface. And well, luckily for us, the telescope that's going to be able to find a lot of these objects just became operational. That's of course the Vera Rubin Observatory we recently discussed during one of the streams. This observatory is going to be able to detect these comets all over the place, and chances are we're going to be finding them pretty much every month. And so by itself, this is a super exciting event. An event that will hopefully teach us so much more about our own galaxy, addressing humanity's deep curiosity about the universe, and possibly even answering questions about life somewhere out there, and whether there's anyone else out there. And so this ancient messenger from the thick disk of the galaxy creates a perfect opportunity to sample the building blocks of star systems billions of years older than our own. And though at the moment visiting this object is sort of out of the question, there's still a way for us to study everything about it by observing this with some of the modern telescopes like the James Webb. And so until we discover something else about this strange object, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM me directly. Maybe support this channel by joining the channel membership that grants you early access and a few more videos, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.